SH2-308, the Dolphin Head Nebula, which I need to mention if we're going to record this for the video. <laughs> um, so we are doing the Dolphin Nebula. The, the yeah. Dolphin Head Nebula, yes. Which, dolphin um, Head Nebula, right. We'll, we'll, we'll at least give it a try. And um, I, God, where are we? Hang on, hang on, there we go. Let's, um, where is it? Where is it? Here, here, here. And uh, share screen, so at least it shows this oh, is yeah, what well. we're going to look at targeting um yeah. which we can probably start targeting from about midnight onwards maybe and yeah, see how cool. it goes and i'll do some i'll probably do some um i think tonight then there's going to be kind of clear skies I, yeah. I think so what i'll probably do is stick my rig out and just see what i get yeah and just see, see how those frames look coming in yeah yeah but, um, yeah, because I know the Newtonian, my Newtonian um, wind, if there's any breeze. <laughs> yeah, 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 they're quite yeah, But I'll see, so see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it be, I think like uh, 10 minutes, I don't, I mean, I did 20 minutes last time, but I don't think I really need to. I've seen some images of this target with, with 10 minute images and there's look, you know, tons of detail. So I don't think it needs to go 20. I did 20 before, but I don't think I'll do it this time. Um, yeah, uh, it's also too much of a risk to lose those that data too. So um, yeah, cool. Give that a go. All right. Good luck for tonight. I'm hope you do get some clear skies because I am completely rained out, and I'm hoping for something tomorrow night. Fingers crossed. Cool. All right, cool, so, cool, Logan. I'll um, I get stuck into it tonight, and um, we'll see if we can get a few test shots to get us started. Anyway. Sounds good. All right. All right. I'll hear from you later. Catch you later, mate. Okay. Um, so this is the Skywatcher 150 PDS, six inch Newtonian. E excellent little scope for the price. I've had this now for a few months and the images you get out of it are amazing considering it costs $600, which is like a third, about a third of the refractor. Um, got the 60 millimeter um, SV Boney guide scope on that. I've got the 224 MC, um, which I'm using as a guide camera. Um, so it's on the Saxon AZ EQ6, which is the same as a Skywatcher. Mount's been really good so far with the scope on it, really nice and solid. I find I'm not losing many subs at all. And, and I got the usual 2600 MC Pro cooled on that. And then in the filter drawer, we've got the L Extreme filter, which is the duo narrowband filter. And um, yeah, this is gonna be going on a target tonight, which is another project I've got going on. So. So I'm going to be imaging the target out here in the observatory. Uh, anybody who's seen my previous videos will be familiar with this setup as it's the thing I've been using the most for uh, imaging targets. And that is the Skywatcher Esprit 120 uh, triplet refractor. It has a, a focal length of 840 millimeters. Um, at the back here, the camera I'm using is the ASI 2600 MM Pro. And in this rather large filter wheel, uh, the two inch filters. Now I have the beta LRGB filters and the Optolong SHO narrowband filters, but for this, for this particular target, I'll just be um, using HA and O3. Uh, the focusing is being done by the Pegasus Astro Focus Cube here. So it works really well. And uh, also up here, I've got the Pegasus Astro um, Powerbox Advanced distributing some of the power, particularly to the um, dew heaters. The whole thing is sitting on this nice sturdy CEM120, iUltron CEM120 mount, um, which I'm really enjoying using. It's, it's um, solid as and uh, quite happily handles the weight of the setup without a problem whatsoever. The target's been rising sort of up over in this direction over in the east and coming up over the roof of the house. When I first started imaging 
this some weeks ago. Um, I had to wait till about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning for it to um, rise high enough for me to um, shoot past the roof of the observatory. But um, more recently it's been coming up around about 11, 11.30. So um, that's been a, a, a lot better. That's my setup and as I said I'm just collecting a narrowband, HA and O3. So, so how long ago was it that we um, first met up? Like a month ago? I think it was BC. I think it was BC, wasn't yeah, it? BC. It's like... yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, before clouds, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know whether AC is going to occur. Oh, something's come up on the screen. I'm going to get rid of that. After clouds would be nice. Um, yeah. You're using. Um, so I'm. So I'm using my. Uh, so I'll be using. Yeah, my 750 Newtonian. Yep. Um, so that's fo focal length on that, I think is, yeah, so it's the, it's the 150 PDS, so it's focal length is 750 millimetres, oh. and your Esprit is, what does that come in at? It's eight, 840. What's that, sorry? 840. Oh, okay, cool, so that's so pretty easy. Not too far, far apart, um, yeah. which would be good. And, of course, we're using effectively the same colour camera, except you're using the colour version, I'm using the mono uh, version. Yeah. So that should yeah. be... Um, that should help with regards to our frame sizes and all that kind of stuff as well. Although the yeah. dolphin head is quite a big target, I don't know if because it's only just fitting in my field of view, and I'm you know at eight forty. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got a bit of a, I've got a little bit of space, but for you, I can imagine that's going to be yeah. Yeah, I've got to make sure it doesn't rotate too much. I've noticed that a couple of them have a, a few of the nights there's been a little bit of movement, and so I can see I'm going to have to do a bit of cropping and. Got to be a little bit careful, otherwise. So I guess that means Astro Pixel Processor will will it bring yours down to my size? Is that the way it works, or? Yeah, it'll. Well, it'll. It'll. Yeah, it should stack them all. Um, it should stack them all together, and it'll just give the, the, then the central part. You know, will be the bit that's all nicely overlapping. That then yeah. you should be able to trim, hopefully. Yeah. Um, to yeah. to get the whole thing fit in. Yeah, so I guess it's a matter of that we just decide when we've had enough of collecting data on it and want to put it together. So, so uh, you're kind of um, you're kind of um, embarrassing me at the moment because I'm like down at like a measly twelve hours of data. And what oh, have you got? Like I just say 18. 18. 18. No, oh, 18. 18. 18. Oh. No, no, similar. Oh. Similar. So that's good. We're at thirty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was expecting because I know you had a couple, you had a clear night. Was it last week or something? Or? Yeah, I had a clear night recently that went overnight. But the problem is, I wanted to collect more um, O3 and the moon's up. And I thought, ah, yeah. I'm not going to bother because it's going to be too close to that and where oh, it gets yeah. to. I mean, another, if it can get a clear night, I mean, we are getting shorter nights now, unfortunately. The luxuries of, you know, starting at 7 30 or something and running through to. Yeah, I know. Six. I mean, I, I pushed it to, I had the system going till five o'clock, but I noticed that actually those frames were just daylight effectively. Yeah. So I think sort of four is about the fast, most you can push it to at the moment here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think for us, it's got a little better now in terms of it's up a bit um, sooner. Like, so now I can get onto it. At, I think it's at about 30 degrees now, about midnight here. So that yeah. is it. Yeah, so it's probably what is it for you then? Two about when you can start imaging it, something like that. Um, no, well, it was it was back at it was at about one thirty. I'm expecting it to be oh. back at around about one by now. Um, because oh, okay, I, yeah, I was starting at two before, but that was at the very beginning. So I'm yeah, yeah. It shows how long we've been doing. It. Yeah, no. <laughs> Great, and then probably what are we? Yeah, see four o'clock is where you kind of need to stop. Yeah. Start and get into into the daylight time. So, yeah, yeah. so that'd be much better actually. From uh, to do eleven thirty. Um, yeah, cool. That would be. Well, good. That's not bad if we can get up to sort of because um, you were. I think we were thinking about maybe forty. Were we? Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. So if I, I'll, 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 I mean, if you do a few more, say you even got up to, if you can get sort of closer to twenty, and I'll yeah, I'll get, get yeah. in the twenties or something. We could get in that. We could get. Um, you know, somewhere around the forty or something would be good, would be good, and then see. That's going to be a good one to stack, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be interesting. It's going to be an interesting one to process too, because um, we'll have to process because you've got you've got the color stars and you've also got the spikes, um, yeah. which I don't have. Yeah, and then yeah, we'll just have to work out how how what the best way is to do it. We're going to have to represent the southern hemisphere here and make sure yeah. we get a, a decent. Yeah, otherwise yeah. we'll just we'll not show it at all. <laughs> 
It's just, yeah, it never, it never happened. <laughs> I think we did it. I think we've got there. So we should have, we've got 46 hours. Bloody hell. That's a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Which, that, yeah. I mean, well, that was the thing I noticed that when you see collaborations, you can see the, the amount of hours that people can, can you know, yeah. build up really quickly. Whereas if you're doing it by yourself, and particularly with weather we've had recently, yeah, <clears throat> we'd be going until 2024 to try and do it individually. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I think that's the most I've even done full stop for me anyway even on even on um just doing half the data i think i've only ever done maybe i don't know i, I might have done 12 or 14 before something yeah like i that. think i know i did i've done i think i've done like 20 is the most i've done on another one 19 yeah. or 20. so 24 is definitely the most um i've yeah. ever done on a target um so yeah that was the fun thing was deciding how we put one shot color together with um the the um with the narrow band stuff it seemed to me that when i got your red um calibrated files in monochrome and i stacked them with my ha which was effectively picking up the red if you like because they look similar yeah when i stacked it it kind of looked disappointing compared to the individuals right so yeah i didn't think it looked better i thought it looked actually worse i don't know why um but so that then I thought, well, actually, is there any point in me doing all this, all this? So in the end, the way I did it, and I don't know what you do when you went and did yours. I can't remember now because you did say, but I went through and did the stack, had them because you had your stack and I stacked mine. And then I just added HA to the red and then O3 yeah. to the blue and the green because that was another way of doing it. So it was actually adding it stacked, but um yeah, that's pretty much how I did it. Cause yeah, I just ended up with the 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 the, the stacked channels, mm. and you know, in Astro Pixel Processor, you know how you can pick to just have individual stacks per channel, basically. Yeah. Um, and I did that, and um, then I just kind of sorted it out in uh, Pix Insight, really, and mm. by like splitting the then merging the data from my one shot color camera into um using the lrgb combo merging that into one file um yep. red green blue and then i took yours and merged it into a separate file using your oxygen for green blue and using your ha for red hmm. and then i add the two images and then i just started playing mixing sort of the two yeah. basically yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know what I, I have to be honest. I didn't know what I was doing at that point. I just thought let's let's start mixing some of this stuff and see what happens. Well, neither did I because I've done the you know HA into um, with it when I later like, did the, the galaxy the video with the sculptor galaxy. I did the HA into the um, RGB, which was but that again I don't know if that makes any difference. But that was again that was a color image. Um, shouldn't be any different in theory with having an RGB that combine compared to you having one shot combined. Um, but I, I, but I, and I wasn't sure what do we do with the what, well, it was basically what was the best way of doing it? Was it we just add the yeah. stack or do we try and combine them unstacked and just calibrated? But I think stacked, I, I didn't see anything, anybody discussing combining calibrated mono together. Yeah. Working that way. It all seemed to be with stacked. I then looked at what, because we were looking at, you know, dealing with each other's images that we'd done. And I looked, I was looking at mine and I was like, I thought, okay, I had, I thought I'd, well, because I'd used, I'd used your RGB stars for starters, which actually was quite yeah. good because mine, you know, from an HA and O3 only are a bit bland. They tend, tend to turn out a bit sort of white. Whereas you had some nice color, had some sort of bit of orange and yellow and stuff like that. And, and, a, and a little bit, was a hint of blue, I think, in, in some of them. So that was actually quite nice. And I was looking at the actual dolphin head and the red bit, and I seem to have a bit more red, but you seem to have a bit more detail. And I was like, oh, right. I pushed it too far. Um, and what I've done, and when I've actually perhaps smoothed it a bit, I've gone a bit too far and I've lost some of that detail. But then in Photoshop, when I got yours and went, hang on, maybe I'll put yours and we'll combine them and make yours as a luminance layer, all that uh -huh. detail that you've got that I sort of pushed out a bit, 
all suddenly came back. It was good. So it was actually quite good having those two different versions because we could, you know, as I said, combine them and get the best of both worlds, I think. Yeah. Um, Because we did talk about, in our talk that we were doing about, um, you know, starting out, um, one of the things was about, obviously, mono versus um, colour and how... A mono obviously uses all of the sensor and therefore, in theory, should have, you know, well, they have more definition than the color, a um, one-shot color, which will have a, um, a matrix, but how the the gap is closing. And it was interesting. I'm hoping I can find it here quickly, but it was interesting when I looked at your red and I looked at my, um, I'm going to see if I can find it, uh, and I look at my HA, I um, the, the difference was not huge. That's um, quite interesting, though, isn't it? Because oh, yeah. like you, you imagine that you're getting a lot more pixels picking up that red than I would be. Well, so you yeah. have to say it was. I think I, I really enjoyed the collaboration. I worked, I think it worked really well. I'm really happy with the image that we've got at the end, and I, yeah, I think that other right. people will like it. Um, and we should look at doing another one. So um, yeah, top top job. I think I think we managed to work through those few issues, and it's been nice having that little learning process of combining the mono with the RGB. Yeah. And I think like that solution that you came up with as well of sort of using a bit from both of our takes on it has come out looking well, like really, um, yeah. a really good image in the end. Yeah, the joy of, of of Photoshop too, having all those different layer options too, which I think you can. You know, pick and choose like you see with screen or overlay or whatever like that and that just makes a huge difference so yeah right. so um if this turns out to be any good here's the image If we wanted to tie up the um, something final words for the for the video, I don't know. I don't know what we say now. No, I don't know what to say. No, I don't know what to say at all. And here is our image. <laughs> yeah. It's like very good working with you, Logan. Yes. I had a I had a great time. We did an amazing job on the dolphin. Yes. yes. Tally ho. Yeah. Yes. See you next. I'm wearing my Nesha shirt, especially. Um, I know. Look at me. I'm in just in a woolen. It's a bit crap. <laughs>